Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And today we're taking a look at this little guy. This is the 7228 SRM Sanran Mew knife. New at the end of 2020. I ordered mine from AliExpress and had to pay full retail price. But now White Mountain Knives has this knife for less than it costs on AliExpress. And you can save 10% on top of that, so it's even less. With my coupon code CCE, almost everything that's being sold at White Mountain Knives, you can get 10% off. There are some manufacturers of brands like Benchmade that don't let sellers sell knives at a discount or having a, you know, a discount codes and things. But if you want to buy a Benchmade or similar knife from White Mountain Knives, once you've finished the payment and everything, you'll get a receipt. Email them back and let them know that uh, you've got coupon code CCE from Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge, and he will refund you that 10%, so you can save your 10%. This is an Axis Lock knife, D2 steel, G10 handle scales, and a very cool pocket clip that you want to hear about. Even if you don't like little knives like this, this new technology pocket clip is really cool. So stick around, the review's coming right now. For those of you who were around at the very start of this channel, a Sanran Mew knife was my very first review. And it was in the 7000 series of knives. Sanran Mew 7000 series of knives are knives that have blades under two inches, and uh, three inches, not two, under three inches in length. And this is also under three inches in length. Let's compare the size to an Ontario Rat 1. Put that on the screen right there. See? It's a smaller knife. The interior rat one is significantly bigger in every single way. But is this thing too small to carry? My hands are within the extra large range when I gotta go buy gloves uh, for the winter, <laughs> especially on days like this week. This week has been so, so cold. It's Thursday today and schools have been closed all week because of the cold. The uh, wind chill factor makes it below minus 40. Minus 40 Celsius and minus 40 Fahrenheit are the same number. So below minus 40, yeah. It's been cold. This knife is a good budget knife. And look at this. My hand fits in here. All fingers get a grip. Even though my hands are within that extra large range. That's between around nine or ten, nine and a half, I guess, in the European men's glove sizes. I'm right in that range. So this knife is a knife that certainly is one where you can get a full secure grip, unless your hands are really, really big. But even if you've got men's small hands, this knife will fit in your hands very well. I've got D2 steel, a vertical brushed satin finish. We've got a fuller a drop point there with a swedge. A really fast belly, you know, a sharp radius right there, and then most of the knife is a straight cutting edge there. Thumb disc for the uh, deployment, and it's a good spot. You put your thumb over that when you need to push through things hard. I did a bunch of cardboard cutting with this, and it's very good to have that thumb rest there to help cut through. And... It's not really in the way when you're slicing through things for stuff to get caught on it because it's back far enough close to the handle. That was not a problem at all. This is not a piercing style knife. That's one thing it is not. It's well sharpened. We've got an access lock. They call it an ambi lock. So very often on access lock knives, you don't really have a sharpness choil as such, but you've got a relief cut here since the plunge ends right at the tip of the blade right now, you've got this whole section here. You can sharpen this knife until you've removed steel up to here. That's a full eighth of an inch. That's a lot of sharpenings before you'll start getting into the plunge area. So that is quite nice indeed. The handle, the handle's made out of G10. We've got black G10 and then a layer of yellow on top. It comes in blue, it comes in a, a reddish-orange. Um, the blue one comes with a black-coated blade. 
These knives are now available at, like I said, White Mountain Knives, which makes them very accessible, especially for Canadians, because AliExpress, most stores there don't ship knives to Canada anymore, all because of uh, CBSA taking away knives and uh, consumers demanding their refunds, even though it's our government's fault and not the seller. So the sellers just decide they won't sell to Canada anymore. The access lock is very smooth. If we just pull back on the lock and the blade just wants to fall, let me here get that out of the way there. The blade just, it's just free. Very smooth. We got washers in there. We've got those black Teflon washers with a very, very thin phosphor bronze washer. At least that's traditionally what San Remu does on knives like this. I have not taken this one up apart yet. I really don't like taking access lock knives completely apart to get into the washers because they can be a pain to put back together. I've never failed to get one back together. I just, it's a pain. So I don't like doing that. So clearly they've got very good uh, lubrication in here. These washers are smooth and lock up is solid. No blade play side to side, up and down. It's wonderful. The access lock is very fully engaged. You can see right there, the shiny part, and then there's a vertical line. That section is where the access lock has been engaged. Did a spine whack test. Solid, doesn't want to close on you. Very well made. We've got a nice relief cut here for the index finger. It's angled and reliefed back just so that you can get a very solid grip here. Sometimes I was gripping a little bit up from there just so that I could push that much harder right over where I was cutting, and that was comfortable as well. These edges here are also lightly rounded. We've got a full lanyard tube and T8 screws here, and I think that's a T4. I'll double check that. It's very easy to sharpen this knife. You've got a nice flat section here that you can put into a clamp system, and if you use wet stones, you know, there is enough distance here away from the edge that you'll be able to sharpen right to the end, to the heel, no problem. I like the fuller. It's got a, it adds to the look on the blade. It's not something to grab to deploy the blade. That's just that thumb disc, and it just deploys very fine. Easy to close the knife. It's very flick friendly for to, you know, it's hard to do in this tiny little space, but to just use the access lock to flick and just deploy the blade and then flick and close it. It's a fun knife and it's not very noisy. It's not super annoying to my wife when I play with this knife while we're watching uh, Netflix or Amazon Prime or whatever. So yeah, that's quite nice. The screws are D-shaped, the pivot, the pins for them I mean, so you only access them from this side. This side's nice and smooth for the finish. Makes it look really nice. I like that milled out line here that they put in there. That's for texture and for, you know, just makes it look really, really nice. This knife, to me, it's got a bit of a 70s vibe to it, the styling. I don't know, G10 backspacer. And now for what you've been waiting for, this pocket clip. This pocket clip, it's a little bit like a wire clip. Deep carry, full deep, full depth. Let me grab my shorts, my pants that I can show you with. It climbs over. Even these, these are standard denim. It's, you know, fairly close to the side. It looks like it's too close. But uh, it goes on full depth and it hides in there. And since everything's black on the back, even this bright yellow knife, it just hides very well. I like that a lot. What happens if I want to be left-handed for a while? You take this and you squeeze and lift out. And it comes right out. You've got little hooks, two on each side right there. So when you squeeze, they disengage. And when you let go, they engage on the sides. And you just slide it in for where you want it. You have to separate it just a little bit. You have to pull those apart, slide them in. Push it in, click, and it's on. 
squeeze and wiggle, pull it out, and it's on. And it is secure. I did some tests on it. I put it on and I was yanking on it. I was using this to test with. I just did it upside down like this. Yanking hard, you know, trying to see if it'll come loose. No, it does not come loose. It stays on there. Very well-made clip. There's some other San Remo knives that have this same clip. They're doing quite a bit with it. I like it a lot. It's not extra big. It suits the size of this knife. And it's so easy to make left to right. It's a very good clip. I'm surprised nobody thought of it sooner. And if somebody did, I wasn't aware of it. So if they're ripping off somebody else's idea, I don't know about that. But that's quite nice. So here it is taken apart. There's a cutaway right there, and there's a cutaway right there. And those two edges are where the pocket clip slides into. Clicks on like that, and it stays there. And uh, of course I can take it out because there's nothing holding it in. But So that's a lot of G10 milled out of the way. These are screws. There's the D shape on the screw. And there's no thread locker on these screws, and that's how I like it. There's the metal that holds it together, screws in back here, so that's all it needs. And there's the Omni spring, and you push it back so that it can start to close. And they've got a white grease in here to help keep everything well lubed up. Works very well. Okay, so I'll take it apart so that you can see the washers. There you go. I'm not going to take it all the way apart. That's as far as I'm going to go because so, it's hard to put back. There's the very thin phosphor bronze. And there's a little black nylon washer underneath it, I think. Yep, the nylon washer is closer to the handle scale. You can just barely see it in here. I'll see how close I can get it to focus. In the main hole, you can see the black washer. And then over here, you can see this. So two washers on each side, that helps keep it very uh, functional, very smooth action. And let's hope I can put this back together. I'm gonna go off camera because this always takes me about 15 minutes to get back together. We'll put this tape measure on the screen for a while we're doing those measurements and things. The weight of this knife, 73 grams, 2.55 ounces. Yep, a nice light knife. The sharpness from the factory, and I measured it right about where my finger is, 85 bess. 200 and less is considered sharp, so yeah, they sharpened this thing quite well. The cutting edge length, imagine a straight line from tip to the heel of the blade. 69.7 millimeters, 2.744 inches. The blade length, tip to the closest spot on the handle, 68.9 millimeters, 2.7125 inches. The blade thickness measured at the Ricasso back here, 3.04 millimeters. That's 0.12 of an inch, so just a tiniest bit under an eighth of an inch thick stock. The blade depth, the widest spot this way, 24.3 millimeters. That's 0.9565 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, about in the middle of this flat section, straight section is where I measured it. It is 0.42 millimeters, 16 and a half thousandths of an inch thick. Awesome. I love that. So this knife, you can sharpen it many, many, many times before it's going to start getting thick behind the grind. The grind angle, 13.3 degrees, 17.1 degrees. A little bit less on the belly, but that's within a degree, the full length. So it was well sharpened, which is surprising on such a tight curve like this. It would be so easy to sharpen it very differently along there. So kudos to whoever was sharpening this. Now for the handle, the handle length is 95.5 millimeters, 3.9175 inches, so four inch handle. The grip area, I measured to, I'm calling it about eight and a half centimeters, about three and a quarter inches, a little bit over three and a quarter inches. The thickness of the handle, not counting the pocket clip, not measured on the access lock pins, just the G10 surfaces, 11.1 millimeters. That's 0.437 of an inch. I like that. 
the depth of the handle anywhere along the grip, it's biggest right about here. That is 24.1 millimeters. That's 0.949 inches. The depth of the knife when it's closed, so the widest spot that'll be in your pocket, 28.2 millimeters, 1.11 inches. And the total length of this knife, oh, I did it again. I forgot to do the conversion to inches. 16.82 centimeters, which is six and five eighths. The price for this, yeah, I should have talked about the price. $42.95 at White Mountain Knives, that's American dollars. Take away 10% with coupon code CCE, $38.66 American. That equals right around $49 uh, in you know the early February 2021. Of course, those numbers can change any day. So yeah, just under $50 Canadian dollars for this knife. That's not bad at all. And uh, I buy the vast majority, at least 85% of my knives from White Mountain Knives, and not a single time has any of my knives, flipper knives mostly, nothing has gotten stopped at the border. So chances are very high if you're in Canada, if you buy from White Mountain Knives, you will get the product sent to you without any hitch. It's mostly because he doesn't put White Mountain Knives on the package. So he doesn't attract uh, the uh, wrath of CBSA to the package. If you want to buy, if you're in Europe, I think the best place to buy this is AliExpress because there's no shipping charge from AliExpress, whereas there would be shipping from White Mountain Knives. What do I think of this knife? I am liking this. Like I said, Sandra and Mew, I've reviewed their knives for a long time. I've review, reviewed over a hundred of their knives and this is right up there with the rest of them. I really like this knife. It's great for carrying in a place where, you know, maybe there's some people that get scared of knives easily. You, know, you get the bright colors. That makes it seem a little cartoony, which seems safe. But you've got an effective blade, a good blade steel, well sharpened, and it's not too heavy. It looks a little chunky, but you could cut apart your apple with this for your lunch, whatever. Not bad at all. If you live in a place where steel rusts easily, D2 is not a stainless steel. I would suggest you get the blue one with the coated blade because that will help protect your blade from corrosion. Okay, so there you go. Good knife. I like it. Thanks for watching my video. Please comment, share, like, all those things that really does make a difference. If you want to contribute to this channel to help me uh, move it forward, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. You get a chance to win a knife every single month. Just go to patreon.com slash cce and sign up. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.